Hello, hello, I'm Tracy Pierce. Thanks for joining me for this series of mini animal communications. So the idea for this series was really born out of what was happening in the United States during the coronavirus lockdown. Uh, I started to wonder what the animals thought about all of this and they kept pinging me, like my intuition, like do a video series, do it, talk to us. So that's really how this series was born. And right now I'm just kind of, whatever animals are joining me, whatever show up in my life, I'm kind of talking with them, asking them questions, interviewing them here. And it's been a really fun project. So today we're gonna to talk with a turtle dove. Uh, sometimes these are called morning doves. And you know, this month, well, the last month or so, it's been more wild animals that I've been talking to. So really, I'm just kind of out walking around in nature and holding up the question, are there any animals that would like to share their wisdom with the world? Uh, if, if you do, please present yourself for a picture. And the, this little turtle dove showed up. So I'm curious to hear what it has to share with us today. So if you're joining me live on Zoom, um, if you have questions for this turtle dove, just click on the bottom there. It should be a button that says chat and type your question in. So I'm gonna go ahead and get quiet and start tuning into this turtle dove and see what you'd like to share with us today. So I get this real softness in its energy. It's been kind of a theme the last few weeks, actually, the animals that have been showing up have been bringing a lot of softness. I get the sense that this is a female. And I kind of hear the, the um, Bobby McFerrin song, Don't Worry, Be Happy. There's this real, um, I don't know, surrender is not quite the, the right word, but this going with the flow, I guess you might call it, kind of energy with this turtle dove. Yeah, it's, it seems like it has some messages for me specifically. Um, like it's, it's letting me know I need to relax and kind of calm down and keep doing these things that I have been doing. I've got a, I've got a lot on my plate this week. I'm preparing to move and um, this turtle dove is encouraging me to remember to be soft and easy and going with the flow. So I wonder, Turtle Dove, is there anything else that you wanted to share with us? I felt like when you, you kind of really showed up in front of me and were making some noise to take your picture. Um, it's saying I'm bringing messages of forgiveness. And this has a lot to do with self-forgiveness, it says. Sometimes it's much easier to forgive others than it is to forgive ourselves. We often hold grudges against ourselves for things that have happened. So this, yeah, this turtle dove is showing me a specific situation I'm dealing with in my life. And um, it's asking me to be really gentle with this situation. Shows me, so I, I feel like morning doves or turtle doves, there's this particular sound they make sometimes when they fly, like they take off flying, it's a ooh, ooh. Um, go, go, go. It makes that sound as well. Um, it's, it, I almost feel like this, this dove, I can hear those sounds that are, um, that the doves make, and there's almost this kind of soothingness um, in the energy, like it comes out and I feel it touch the energy around uh, my body and it has this kind of ripple effect, this ripple soothing effect. Yeah, it's, it's showing how 
um, something about how the life of a turtle dove really is not very long. That's what it's saying. It's a sense of making the most of everything. But it's not like um, a productivity kind of thing. It's not that. Taking time to notice the things that that touch your energy in that way is what the, the turtle dove is saying is <clears throat> Tracy remembering that real soothing kind of feeling that comes into your etheric or your energy and to look for more of that in the world. Joseph is saying there's a lot of people in the world right now that need soothing that need gentleness there's a lot of fighting and you know it's showing you know right now we're kind of in the midst of um, a lot of protests and riots um, due to issues with minneapolis police and police brutality and, and that and this this dove is showing how how much so many of us in the world but it is kind of showing like the united states in particular really need need more soothing and taking care of you know like like you would take care of a little kid or a little baby as a society you guys have been really harsh with yourselves and harsh with each other and harsh with the environment and the animals um, and the turtle dove really feels like the way forward um, there has to be more softness and gentleness and understanding in these kind of higher positions of power as we've shown. So we've got a question coming in for you, little dove. Um, how can we humans find or create soothing and get better at just being? The dove is saying, so the first, one of the first things you can do is to be aware of how you're talking to each other um she's showing how there's an energetic effect when one person's voice hits another person's energy and it can either it can be soft and gentle or it can be like aggressive and pointed and sharp or it could like there are all these different ways that we can interact with each other and the, the dove is showing having awareness of, of your voice, like what's coming out of your mouth, literally your voice stream, and how that energetically might affect somebody else. And, you know, the, she's showing too, like, um, it's more than just creature comfort kind of things, you know, like, you know, maybe it feels really good to, to curl up in a blanket on the couch, like there's a certain soothingness about that. Um, but the dove is saying it, it's more than that. Um, we can so certainly be soothing to ourselves, which is important, it says, but it's showing, it's, it's like, um, so she's showing is like a person and then there's this emanation of energy kind of coming from it and showing how it's almost like the frequency or something needs to change or we need to be aware of how our energy affects other people or um, situations or animals around us. I feel like there's a little bit more um, that you're trying to show me. Could you... Um, Try to show me that again. It also feels, so it's, um, what I feel like she's showing is that as humans, we tend to be really focused on, okay, this is my group of human beings. Maybe it's your family or your friends or your social group or something. We tend to be really focused on them maybe and maybe making them feel good or wanted or giving them kind of positive feelings. 
and the dove is encouraging us to expand that to a larger arena of people. Um, yeah, it's just showing how the humans can be so focused on being good to only a certain subset um, of people they relate to. And she's really asking us to, to, to offer that to a larger group of people. Thank you, Deb. I, I think that's pretty clear. Um, I wonder, you know, I get this really, you know, doves are kind of the sun, um, kind of a symbol of peace. And I feel that kind of emanating from your energy right now. I, I wonder if there's something else you might like to say about that or, or something else. I don't know. I was just kind of feeling this message of, of peace coming through um, the dove ar archetype or something. I wonder if there's something you like to say about that. Yeah, there's a sense of... Um, it's, a, it's almost like the humans don't understand what peace really is. And again, she's showing this um, image of a small group of humans, like um, humans just kind of being interested in their small little groups. And she, she says it can be really hard to extend that, that loving or soothing caretaking energy out to a bigger group of people. But she's saying, I understand why, why it's difficult for humans. And she shows how our brains, it's, it's, she's showing like brains roadblocking um, different places, like our, our heads get in the way a little bit too much is what she's saying. We want to rash, uh, rationalize it out and, and make sense of things. She's saying the natural order of things doesn't always make sense to what a, like a logical human brain might think things are supposed to be. Another question coming in here. Um, do you think that st substances like caffeine and sugar get in the way of holding one's energy in a more gentle place and relating to others in a kinder way? So she's showing me, she says, well, it's a lot more than just caffeine and sugar. Um, she's showing, I, it's almost like um, one of those old timey barber um, shaver things I keep seeing. She's showing like, like one of those coming down. Um, it, like she says, these kind of things kind of cut the piece a little bit. Um, she's showing how they kind of box us into our own energy a little bit um, like sugar and caffeine. There's a, there's a certain kind of harshness, especially with caffeine that like, it's like uh, gearing in, like um, can be very masculine and aggressive, she says. Yeah, she's saying there are a lot of different kinds of substances because she's showing me like pesticides and like some other, medications and you know like different kinds of chemicals and how um it creates i see this like jaggedness like a graph that has all this jaggedness on it she says it creates this jaggedness in individual energies and there's a a certain sense of um it feels like it almost blocks something in our innate knowledge or our, you know, like back in the day, like way ancient times, humans, we knew how to survive in these same ways that the animals do today and, and today with our technology and everything, it's a whole different story. But she's showing how these different substances and chemicals do change how we relate to each other and relate to our environment, she says. 
she says, and it's really like this huge cocktail of chemicals. You know, we've got pesticides, we've got caffeine, we've got sugar, we've got how many other kinds of chemicals that are in packaged food and stuff in the air that you're breathing. Um, she says, that's a really difficult um, kind of thing to dissect and, and pull apart. Like, it, it's really, really individual. She's like, there's no way government officials are ever going to regulate things to a level that are really for human and earth health. Um, she's showing how industry and the economy has, it's like a hierarchy, like it, it's above the needs of um, the actual biological creatures that need them. And it, she says it's something that's very, very difficult to break free of, even for people who are, are very aware um, there's a bit of a financial barrier. She's even showing like, um, you know, like she's showing, well, maybe generic medications have more fillers in them or, you know, buying Wonder white bread versus buying, you know, a more nutritious, dense kind of whole wheat or some kind of grain whole grain kind of bread so that those kind of things really make a difference and there's been so many layers of chemicals and um, these different things layered onto not only humans but the whole earth that has created um, a disruption and a disconnection from from each other so what she's showing it's almost like um, I don't know if it's like a, a, a neuron receptor or like a a nerve receptor or something but she's showing it's almost like so these two nerve receptors that are trying to get the message and there's this block that comes in between them um, creates disconnection humans would do well to tune into more of uh, you know like humans are good at measuring physical impact but we haven't really gotten to the place of being able to measure energetic impact uh, you know, and what she's showing is like with pesticides, how, you know, we may have proven, okay, yeah, they, they disrupt the bees and they do this and that in the human system, but there's this deeper energetic level that um, scientists or humans are, she's saying humans are, are quite caught in the physical world and they haven't figured out yet how to measure some of these energetic factors that are really affecting the world. Do you have any um, suggestions about how we might be able to, to bring that more forward or make that something that science pays attention to? She gives some hope. She feels like there are some bright scientists. She keeps showing like these scientists with a lab coat and glasses and like bing, this big light bulb above their head. Um, she feels like there are some scientists that are up and coming who have a bit more like, connection to nature, connection to these um, energetic forces. Uh, she's showing me a couple, a few specific people actually, probably nobody watching this would know them, but just some people I know who are doing some work in scientific fields who do have you know, some spiritual awareness and awareness of these energetics and how they, you know, do these physical, the energetics of physical substances affecting each other. She's also showing me, so, you know, um, this is kind of a popular term right now, the highly sensitive person, highly sensitive person. I think there's a movie about it, uh, the Lannis Morissette. She's showing how even that being recognized is, is kind of a big deal. Like um, there's a, it's like there's a group of scientists that thinks, oh, all humans are kind of the same and you know, we just break them down into a formula and that's how they work. But then there's this other group of scientists that has this greater awareness and she's like, she really hopes there's a momentum behind that path, that group of scientists. Okay, we've got another question coming in for you, Lynn Stove. What can we do individually to counteract these influences, even if we can't totally remedy the situation, and to create more connection with the earth and all the creatures? Oh, 
Oh, she says, well, I feel like you kind of answered your own question. <laughs> um, that it is important for individuals to do what they can. She's encouraging us to, as humans, to spend some time outside in nature every day. She said it would be really beneficial if people could spend time in a more wild kind of environment, but even if they can just get to a park or some kind of open, beautiful space or um, like a big, beautiful tree might be planted in a city park. There's, there's a way like individuals really, she's encouraging us to, to spend time in nature every day. Uh, even she says even five minutes makes a difference. There's a certain level of um, reconnection. She says she's she, she's a little concerned that humans are so disconnected. Like something as simple as taking your hand and putting it on on a tree, or putting your hand on the earth, or like gently caressing flowers or plants or something. There is a reconnection. There's this energetic reconnection that happens, and she says that's one way. She's also showing, you know, there, there, there are groups like, you know, like meetup groups, hiking groups, um, groups that have some kind of focus and to do with nature. It just bring more awareness to nature. She really wishes that, she feels like, he, you know, where we live here in Colorado, we're pretty lucky people are really into the outdoors. Um, she would really like to see more outdoor kind of, of programs throughout the world, you know, not necessarily here in Colorado, there's a lot already in place. And she's like, that, those are great. Um, and she's also showing there's a like blessing the animals or the trees that you see. She says animals are, I'm sorry that humans have this, and she says animals can do it too, but there is a special something that happens when, when humans do it, like giving a blessing. You know, like if you're touching a tree, like, oh, bless you, tree. Or, you know, you're touching the plant, like, oh, bless you, little rose, or, or something like that, like offering a blessing. Um, the dove says, there, there, you know, there's these energetic effects from, from kind words and compassion beyond what... Um, humans necessarily understand and to just continue to be connected to that and, and making the small words and small differences that make a difference every day, which is mm, so much. Uh, well, I'm seeing it. Let's see. It looks like we don't have any other questions. We're coming close to the end of our time. Uh, Little Miss Dove, is there anything else you would like to share with us before we close the space today? Now uh, she's saying thank you for um, bringing her voice forward. Yeah, maybe we can do another session another time. We can maybe do that, yeah. All right, we'll keep the possibility open of you coming back and sharing again some other time. All right, well, thanks so much for joining me here today. It's always such a joy and a pleasure to translate these animal messages for you. It's, it's, it's just a joy, so. Thanks for joining us, and until next time, take care and be well.